Having completed the slice diagram, the next step would usually be to progress to the coverage tab to fine tune the array coverage throughout the venue. However, Display 2.3 offers an express option enabling a rapid optimization of both the inter cabinet arrays and equalization. This is intended for use when there isn't time available to refine every step in detail or for technicians who are perhaps new to optimized systems and may only have had limited training in how to perfect a design. The Express option uses a series of defaults that will produce excellent results in the shortest possible time frame for any technician regardless of previous experience. The Slice tab has two buttons in the bottom right of the window that can be used when the slice drawing is completed. You may either click Done and move on to open the coverage window or click Express to use the Express option. Note that the Express window is only accessible from the Slice tab. It cannot be opened from the dashboard. This is consistent with the workflow required as the slice drawing, including placing the array and defining the audience start and finish, must be completed before the optimizations can be run in the Express window. The Express window condenses coverage, splay, rigging and equalization onto a single page. A few basic selections are required before the mechanical and equalization optimizations are triggered simultaneously. The optimized system can then be rigged and the equalization exported as a D2P file for uploading to an MLA series array, an icon amplifier or DX4.0 processor. The window is divided into four principal sections. The coverage on the left hand side, a rigging section in the centre, an EQ and resolution section on the right, and just below that, the export options. To the left side of the window is a section to define the coverage. The diagram at the top shows the venue slice created in the preceding window, but with the audience region now shown as a series of green dots. Non-audience are the red dots and hard avoid is blue. Hard avoid is placed on stage and is an area that the optimization will actively try to reduce levels to obtain much higher gain before feedback from the array. This is a great advantage, particularly for events such as classical concerts or theatrical performances where large numbers of microphones are used, some of which may even be omnidirectional. You'll also see the areas at the back of the circle and under the balcony which are coloured pink. These are areas that are shadowed so the array has no line of sight and it is obviously impossible to get any coverage in these areas. They will be ignored in the optimization. Each of the dots in the different regions are used by the system to take a frequency response measurement which is compared to the desired performance during the optimizations. The options are a much simplified version of the coverage tab. You may select the audience listening height to be either standing, seated or a custom height of your choice entered in the custom offset box. The coverage options also include the selection of single or two point rigging. The environment section allows you to add air absorption compensation to compensate for the loss of high frequencies that naturally occur depending on the environmental conditions. This is enabled by default but can be defeated by unchecking the air abs box. It is vital to use the air absorption compensation, particularly at outdoor events in the summer months where it can make a drastic difference to the system performance. The temperature, humidity and pressure should be entered for the location. Measurements can be taken with an environmental measurement meter which are available these days at very reasonable cost. Or from an online weather report, most smartphones have weather apps that may be used. The centre section shows the rigging information including all inter-cabinet angles and an overall aim angle for the array. 
This will show the default minimum angles prior to the optimization and will update once the optimization is completed. On the right hand side, we have an index plot. The index plot is a graphical representation of the coverage, which gives an overview of the system performance in the entire space at a glance. The horizontal axis is frequency, similar to a standard frequency response graph. Level is indicated by colour, yellow being the loudest, going through the colour spectrum getting gradually quieter to blue, which are the lowest SPL levels. The vertical axis is rather unique. This is the shell of the room unravelled, starting with the back of the stage at the bottom, going up over the stage, through the audience region, up the rear wall, over the roof, and down the wall behind the array. The dashed horizontal white line shows the audience start position, the solid white line the audience finish, and the dashed black line is the reference point. In an ideal world, the central rectangle between the audience start and finish would be a consistent colour with all other areas blue. Obviously, the laws of physics dictate that this perfect scenario is impossible to achieve, but it's very easy to see how close the system performance is getting to the ideal. The index plot displays the coverage prior to the optimization and will update in real time as the optimization runs so you can see how well the array will cover the venue and importantly also get a good indication of the attenuation in non-audience areas. If the array is from the Wavefront Precision series, there is a section to determine the resolution at which the system will be run. This determines how many amplifier and DSP channels are used to drive the array. The greater the resolution, meaning that more channels are used to give as much control of vertical dispersion as possible. However, the ability to scale the resolution enables systems to be designed to match both budget and performance requirements. The resolution is adjusted by using the less and more buttons until the required resolution is displayed on the right. The highest resolution is one box, which means each cabinet is optimised individually. One channel of DSP for the passive products, the WPM and WPS, with two channels for the biamp systems, WPC and WPL. The lowest resolution for WPM is four box, with three box for WPS and WPC, and two box for WPL. The graphic updates to show the resolution selected as colour bands. So for example, in two box resolution, the top two cabinets will be dark blue, the next pair light blue, then two cyan, two green, two yellow, with the final pair orange. Once the resolution has been selected, simply click Optimize All. You will first see the mechanical optimization go through hundreds of combinations of cabinet angles as the internal computer model compares the output of the array with the desired performance until it finds the best solution. Once completed, the array diagram will update to show the array shape, including trim height for the highest point at the top of the flying grid and the highest and lowest point of the actual array. A window will appear giving you the option to build the array. You are prompted to open the Rig tab, from which you can read the inter-cabinet angles and vital details for the array, such as the loading on front and rear points, and whether the rigging meets BGV C1 and DIN 18800 safety standards. You can also create a printable report, which includes images of both the venue, slice and array. Once the array has been flown, you can accurately measure the array angle, either with the inclinometer fitted to the flying grid, standard on MLA flying grids and an option on wavefront precision systems, or with a standalone inclinometer or tilt meter, which could include a smartphone app. Close the rig tab and return to the express window. You can now click on the aim box and enter the measured value for the array angle and click done. The array angles table will update and the EQ optimization will commence. As well as the index plot updating, the graph below it shows the frequency response at each of the green dots in the audience region. 
These will gradually be refined, starting with the lowest frequencies, demonstrating how consistent the response and SPL will be over the entire audience from front to back. We can see from the index plot how well the system is performing. Between the dashed and solid white lines we have a good even band of colour with all other areas close to blue. The solid blue areas are the pink dot regions at the back and under the balcony where the array cannot reach. The final stage is to export the optimised output. You have the option to export the printable file, export to ViewNet or an XGLC file for importing into Ease 4.0. For more detail on the printable reports and exporting 3D data for ease, please see the Display 2.3 file export video. Export to ViewNet is the most commonly used function as it exports a D2P file containing all of the equalization coefficients which can be directly uploaded to one of the MLA series arrays, an icon amplifier to drive a wavefront precision array or a DX4.0 processor if the array is O-line. First select a suitable file location for the exported file and click Save. Note that this will create a file, but the file will be empty until the export is started. You can now give the D2P file a suitable name. This will default to the project file name, but on some Windows configurations, a long file name will fail to upload. So select a shorter name and avoid spaces, underscores or hyphens. You will now see a list of all the arrays in the project. If these have a green OK, the EQ optimization has been completed. You can see that an MLA array has been added to our demonstration project, but it hasn't yet been optimized, so a red exclamation mark is shown and it isn't possible to select this array for export. Click on the checkbox to include all arrays required. By default this will be all of them, but perhaps you have some that were experimental and won't be required, in which case deselect them. Now click export and the window will display the export taking place, working through all selected arrays. When the window disappears the export is finished and the D2P file will be available. This can be used in conjunction with ViewNet to load into your array either directly if it is from the MLA series or into an Icon amplifier or DX4.0 processor.